most importantly, the session is for you. So the materials that we have, they will be sent out to you. You will also have the recording of the session. So I really encourage you to ask questions. Let me know if there's something more you want to know or you want to discuss. And we can definitely tailor it to your needs. So I've been in the industry for well over 20 years. I have worked across both pharmaceutical companies and CROs, both in the U.S. and globally. I've had the pleasure of working with Barnett now for about five or six years and have presented topics on everything from investigator training, CRA training, risk-based monitoring, root cause analysis, corrective preventive actions. I've worked with the FDA and regulatory inspectors, both pre- and post-inspections. And I am currently working as a director in clinical operations in oncology, but I've also spent a number of years as a quality assurance auditor. So with the topics we present, I'll try to give you very specific examples, and we'll talk about this information from a very practical perspective in terms of how do we actually apply this to our studies, what does it mean. We know what the regulations expect or what they state, but with the differences in our clinical trials and the challenges we face sometimes with getting patients in on time and especially with COVID in terms of all of our remote site management, we've really had to look differently at how we implement different risk-based approaches. So our objectives for today, discuss FDA guidance and EMA reflection paper for clinical trial risk management and monitoring. Now this isn't new, so certainly the initial paper came out in 2013 from both the FDA and from the EMA. So not new there, but we will talk a little bit about some of the draft updates that have come out, and that paper came out in 2019. So you will see again that we've provided that as a handout for you. And then we're also going to talk about the philosophy behind risk-based monitoring, how we got here. We'll talk a little bit about Transcelerate and Clinical Trials Transformation Initiative. But again, a lot of that information isn't really new. It's part of what we've been doing in the industry since 2013, 2016. But what is new are the changes that have come up in E6. So ICHGCP E6, Revision 2, those changes started coming forward 2016, 2018. We started to see a lot of different philosophies around the requirement to manage risk at our research sites. And then in 2019, 2020, we started to see that E6 is going through revisions to now be revision three. And we haven't seen a lot of change in the risk language. But what we have seen is the focus on still having quality by design. And we'll talk about that coupled E6, R3, as well as the revisions in ICHGCP E8. And E8 is for general provisions on clinical trials, so we will touch on that. Because what we do see with that is we see quite a bit of emphasis, again, on proactively identifying where the challenges are in our studies. And that comes into play with number three in terms of our objectives review best practices for risk management for trial oversight and monitoring. So the references we provided, just to walk you through them, we won't be talking about them in detail, but this was one of the initial position papers that came out on risk-based monitoring, and this organization was Transcelerate. So Transcelerate is a consortium put together by the pharmaceutical industry, it has CRO consortium, government leaders, and the concept was to take this very difficult approach of risk management and come up with some standardized approaches we can use across the industry. So just within this paper, they suggest different tools. Some of them now have become standardized with different software platforms in terms of actually using a risk assessment categorization tool, or RACT. You're probably very familiar with that. This paper was also the first time they really talked about having an integrated quality risk management plan. The acronym for that is IQRMP. Again, just good references in terms of where did this thinking come from and how is it applied. So since this paper initially came out, a number of organizations, again, have developed software, have developed this electronically. So we have a lot of tools that we can use to identify risk in clinical trials, to build our dashboards. However, 
every study is unique. And one of the challenges that I've faced is that I work in a lot of phase one studies. In phase one, we don't have a lot of data. So sometimes the organization will say, well, we're not doing risk-based monitoring because we don't have enough data. We're going to monitor everything 100%. But what we need to realize is that this initiative, when we talk about a risk-based approach, we're not just talking about monitoring. So it's a little bit misleading. A risk-based approach is about managing the risk in a clinical study, and that's what we'll talk about throughout the presentation. So the other guidances we provided, this one here is the risk-based approach to monitoring clinical investigations, and this is the latest question and answer document that was put out by the FDA. You'll see, again, this came out in 2019. So not very new, but it is still a draft. It has not been finalized. So there's been no further language adjustments. And with this document, again, it just talks about how do you implement risk-based monitoring? What does it really mean? So what is the monitoring approach? And we'll talk about that throughout the document as well. So what is the purpose? and should sponsors document their methodologies? The answer is yes, and we'll talk about the importance of monitoring plans and what that looks like.